time doth fly, the week has come and gone, and so I find you here again and prepare to carry on. Welcome, my muggle friends! I am the one known as Funky Monkey, and without further ado, let us plunge straight into The Prisoner of Azkaban! Released not in November of 2003, but in May of 2004, The Prisoner of Azkaban tells of Harry's third year of school. An SKP of the notorious Azkaban prison has designs to end our hero, for the glory of Voldemort, who doesn't actually appear this year. So grab your wand and think of your happiest memory as we prepare to meet The Prisoner of Azkaban. As ever, we begin in the suburban nightmare that is Privet Drive. Vernon Dursley's equally dreadful sister has come to stay, but one wrong word spurs Harry to action. Let me tell you. <laughs> Serves her right for being such a windbag in the first place. It's all too much for a team to bear, and Harry is off. Luckily, there's a magical bus service for wizards in need. Welcome to the night bus. Emergency transport for the stranded witch or wizard. And our hero is whisked off to London, to the company of the Minister of Magic. Harry, the Ministry doesn't send people to Azkaban for blowing up their aunt. And so the trio are reunited, and Harry is off to school. And while it is much smoother than last year, the journey is not uneventful. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to Professor Remus Mooney Lupin, this year's Defence Against the Dark Arts teacher. And so, Harry and his friends settle into their third year of wizarding. And then, Sirius Black, titular prisoner of Azkaban, is sighted. And when Professor Lupin is absent, Snape fills in with a few words on werewolves. Granger, are you incapable of restraining yourself, or do you take pride in being an insufferable know-it-all? Ooh! Burn! And then, Quidditch! Which is where the Dementors attack again! <laughs> Arresto Momentum! Now, I would actually do the Butch and Sundance joke here, but it hasn't worked since Road to El Dorado, so let's just move on. Harry receives a mighty gift from the Weasley twins. The Marauder's map. We had so much. And listens in as a terrible truth is revealed. And remains to this day. Harry Potter's godfather. Harry Potter's godfather? How could he have turned away from his godson like this? Here's a hint. He hasn't. Winter turns to spring, and Lupin teaches our hero a charm to ward off the Dementors. Expecto Patronum! The plot kicks in again one night, when Harry spies one Peter Pettigrew, who is presumed dead, walking the corridors of the school. Instead, Harry encounters only Professors Snape and Lupin. And Lupin is not pleased at Harry's map. Sirius Black is a map to you. Now then, the events of the next few scenes take place concurrently and are therefore presented via the medium of split screen. Hi future me! Hi past me! Shall we just get on with it? No, I'm enjoying this too much. Well, I'm confused already. Oh, don't worry about it, you'll get the hang of it. Let's be begin! And so the stage is set for an epic confrontation. Oh, good punch! <laughs> Thanks, that felt good. The trio head down to Hagrid's hut to witness the execution of a hippogriff. Buck makes me sentenced to death. Scabbers, you're alive. And Harry and Hermione distract their past selves and free Buckbeak. That, that hurt. Sorry. But they're out after hours, and Hagrid covers their escape when the officials arrive. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And my niece book smarts always come in handy. But scabbers won't be denied. Oh. Bit me. Run. Run. And Whomping Willows don't play fair. And now we wait. At the end of the tunnel, the whole story is finally revealed. But are any of them left-handed, I wonder? This story doesn't end here, because when the full moon strikes, the werewolf's curse takes hold. Why, that sneaky Whoa, little... whoa, 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 steady on there. This is a family show, remember? Okay, alright, fine, fine. Harry starts after a wounded Sirius, with future self and Hermione following close behind, straight into the path of the Dementors. The Dementor's kiss takes its toll on both Harry and Sirius. My dad will come. He'll come to the Patronus. But then a mysterious charm, conjured by future Harry, saves the day. <laughs> Harry frees Sirius. Okay. So technically it's Hermione that frees Sirius, but let's not split the differences here. Who flees on Buckbeak. And then Dumbledore steps in with some cryptic advice. Mysterious thing, time. We did it. Did what? what Good night. What's that all about? <laughs> This is why time travel is regulated! Paradoxes! Paradoxes everywhere! Thus do we close this chapter with Harry receiving a glorious gift. Ah! And so we close the book on the Prisoner of Azkaban, the third Harry Potter adventure, and usher it once more unto the House of Love. Director Alfonso Cuaron brings to an end the rosy, candy-coloured sense of wonder that his predecessor so excelled in, and so much the better for it. It's a dangerous world for our heroes now, a darker, bleaker world. That's not to say that The Prisoner of Azkaban is so dark, nor bleak a film. No, there is humour here, and warm feeling. Where the movie falls down again is in its extended runtime. And yes, I fully accept that there is much story to cover, and even at 136 minutes the pace manages to keep from flagging, but it is 136 minutes, no light fluffy distraction. Then again, the dark times have begun, and things can only get worse for our hero from here. But as ever, we shall get to that. Thank you for watching my muggle friends, and I invite you to join me in seven days hence when we drink deeply from the Goblet of Fire. Spellcasting! D-I-S-M-I-S-S -S -S. <laughs>